Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome to Chatomics. Today I'm going to show you how to create a threat object from a GEO dataset. So there are many public available uh, G, uh, single cell RNA sequencing datasets in GEO, and it's a gold mine for researchers. But um, for beginners, many of you may be stuck at the uh, very first step and how to read those uh, datasets from GEO into R and convert it as a threat object. Threat actually has a really comprehensive tutorial for downstream analysis. Once you uh, create a threat object from those GEO datasets, you can easily make many uh, visualizations. Okay, today uh, to, for demonstration, we're going to use this dataset, uh, uh, this GSE uh, accession number. So this is a, a AML a acute myeloiding uh, leukemia uh, single cell RNA sequencing datasets, and it has actually 43 different samples. So we will actually download all the data metrics, uh, count metrics, and also annotation metadata files, and then create a threat object for each of the file and, and merge them into a single uh, big threat object. Okay, really it depends on how the authors upload uh, their data. For this example, uh, we have one, sam uh, one sample, uh, one data metric for each sample, but maybe in other uh, accession number, uh, GSE uh, accession number, uh, the author upload, upload all the merged uh, data metrics together. And in that case, it is very easy because it's a single data metric. You can just read into, uh, into R, okay? Uh, so to actually download this, uh, so you can direct click here to download uh, the data, but uh, in order to do it on the command line, we will download it from the FTP. So if you go, if you go to uh, this uh, GEO FTP, if you just search uh, Google search uh, GEO FTP, you will find this page and it will tell you where are those uh, GSE uh, data sets are located. So, so um, this is actually the, the uh, GSE 116 256 and where it's located, this FTP address. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's uh, first, I uh, will go to uh, a, fo a folder. Is it? So go to terminal, and this is the folder. So, uh, I have a data folder, and I cre created a new um, folder uh, just for this uh, geo uh, ID. And what I'm going to do, so because I have that uh, FTP uh, address, I can use wget and uh, download this uh, tar file, it's a zip file. Okay. So it takes a couple of seconds. So if you use ls, so it's a uh, zip file. So next, let's actually um, Unzip it, use the tar xvf command. Okay, so here, uh, let's look at it again. So now you you see uh, this is the original file and those are the uh, unzip file. So you see they are actually 43 uh, samples and together they also have the uh, annotation file. This is the data count matrix. So let's first remove this file. And we can actually take a look uh, of one of them. So what I usually do, I use the zip file again. So I will use zless, dash capital S. So, so each line uh, will not actually uh, fold uh, when it's too long. Let's look at it. And now you can use the uh, left and the right arrow to navigate and up arrow, down arrow to, uh, to navigate. You see, this is a data frame. So the first column is a gene, and then then you have the uh, cell barcode ID, and then each entry is the counts for that gene. Okay, and you notice that actually the author has already uh, pre uh, prefixed the sample name uh, with the cell barcode. So if the author haven't done that, authors haven't done that, you might want to actually add this like by yourself when you read this data matrix, because different samples may have the same actual barcode. So uh, later when you actually merge all the samples together, you may have this uh, barcode collision problem, okay? Okay, 
Okay, let's press Q to quit. And let's look at the other file, the annotation file, right? Use the same command, but it's the annotation file. Oh, no, I had a typo here. So essentially, this is the, uh, just the metadata uh, column for each cell. So you can actually just uh, insert this into the thread object metadata uh, slot. Okay. So Q to quit. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let's go back to into R and read in the count matrix and also the metadata. So let's first load the libraries that we need. And to read in the count, because to create a thread object, it needs a count a matrix, but this actually is a data frame. So we will actually uh, first uh, read, use the read CSV. So we write a small function here. So file is the, the path for the file. So we read, use read underscore TSV to read that file and uh, convert it as a data frame and uh, the first column remember is the gene, so I just take it out for the for now. So x call um, dollar sign gene, and then I will remove the first column, and then I uh, add all the row names as that genes, and return that as a matrix. Okay, so it's a really simple function. Okay, so now let's actually uh, get all the count uh, uh, files. So the pattern will be like this. So I use the list of file, and then this is the folder that I uh, created. So I use full name equals true. So this one will list all the counts files here. And you see there are 43 uh, samples, and so 43 uh, dm.txt.gz file, okay? So I use the pattern thus to grab all, all those uh, count metrics. Okay, so I want, the next action I want to extract this as a sample name. So what I do, I can actually map this count files and use base name function to, uh, to um, extract only the last part, bit of this full path. So if I do this, then if you look at samples again, now it, it's the, uh, just the, the uh, file name for that count matrix. So now actually I will just remove this because these are all the same. I will just keep the first uh, several bits of the string here as the sample name. So that's why I'm using this regular expression stir underscore replace. And I actually use a regular, uh, write a regular expression and only uh, capture the first bit of the string that we want uh, to be the sample name. Okay, so if we do this again, and if you look at samples, it will be just like this, okay? And uh, now we'll, this count files, we will actually uh, give it a name, it's a vector, so we, we give the name uh, instead of samples, okay? So now we are ready actually to read uh, in all this uh, data frame uh, in, uh, into R as a matrix. So we use the map function and map takes the count files or 43 samples here and now also get the, uh, we have the name for each of the, uh, the uh, uh, file here and now we can just use read counts we just uh, uh, wrote the small function here just for demonstration because it's 43 it's a little bit too much uh, so I just um, read in the first four files okay so but uh, when you uh, do this uh, exercise, you don't really need uh, this, okay? But for demonstration, I will just read the first four files, okay? If I do this, it will read in the first four, actually, uh, data frames as a data matrix, as a matrix, okay? Okay, if you see here, counts, it's a larger list of four elements. And you look at counts, and because we that's why we put the uh, add the sample name as the uh, uh, as the vector name here like the names of that vector use the sample so now you actually you can access each of the uh, samples by using a dollar sign for this list 
So if I if we do this, you see it's a uh, matrix uh, that is ready for reading into the uh, 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 swap. Okay. Uh, okay, that's good. So now next we need to read in the meta file. So again, we create a small uh, function called read meta. So essentially reading that uh, annotation file, turn it uh, into data frame. We also uh, need to actually uh, take out the cell name. So the first column is the cell name. And we remove that first column and put the cell name as the row name because thread, object, thread actually used the row names uh, as the, uh, for the cell barcode and to match uh, the uh, count matrix and this barcode here. So it's a simple function here. Uh, similarly, we will uh, first list all the meta, meta files here. So 43 again, okay? And make sure the order of this is the same as the uh, count matrix, but it, because we use list.files, usually it should be the same. If it's, you're not sure you want probably just pipe it into sort. So you make sure they are, they are the same order. So, okay. Okay, now we can uh, use uh, this map character function to read in the meta files and also the base name of it. Okay, let's look at, it. so the math name, so it will be essentially the same. And we will, Again, extract only the sample name here using the stir replace function, and also add the uh, the this uh, meta file uh, vector. Like uh, we we assign the meta names as as its names. Okay, so it's a named vector. Okay, if you can take a look at again, again, so the path of the file and also the name of that uh, file. Now we use the per function again, uh, map function from per. And again, we read in the first four files uh, and then specify this read meta function that we just created. Let's do that. And you see actually meta is also a list and then it has four list, four um, elements and you can use a dollar sign to access it. And if you use, so this is essentially the uh, data frame that we can insert into Thread's uh, metadata slot, okay? Now we are ready to create a Thread object right, for each sample. So to do that, we use the map to function. So we have, now we have two actual variables, X and Y. So the counts, so we have four counts uh, data matrix and meta, we have four data frames of the metadata. Then we use the create, create thread object from thread and we use counts as dot x. So this dot x is referring to every, every elements in this list. And then uh, because we want to actually convert it into a sparse matrix, uh, we used as uh, sparse matrix uh, to convert the dense matrix into a sparse matrix to save space. And then metadata equals to dot y and uh, this y re refers to every element of that uh, metadata uh, data frame, okay? So now we can do that, objects, okay. So essentially this function will create one thread object for one sample, right? So if you look at objects and you can use dollar sign to see, okay, this is the first thread object. It has like a thousand some uh, cells, and then you can look at this. The second one has 748 samples, okay? Now we are ready to merge all the thread object together. So to do this, we can use the uh, reduce function from per, and, and uh, we can merge an X and Y, so merge this four thread object uh, iteratively. So let's do that. And now, if we look at here again, merged thread. Uh, now it's a single thread object, but now we have 2,392 because we uh, merge all the cells together into a single object. So now we can actually remove those uh, 
uh, big files to save a uh, memory so those counts objects meta and then do garbage correction to uh, to reclaim all the uh, memories okay now since we have a thread object now we can just run standardized thread uh, processing uh, steps so normalize data and uh, scale the data and essentially find the variable uh, genes uh, no, sorry this is actually a uh, normalization first use a lock uh, transformation and then scale the data and run PCA and because those are very different samples I want to actually run harmony to integrate them and then run UMAP find neighbors and uh, and also find clusters in this case nearest neighbor uh, graph okay so we can run this this is just very standardized thread uh, processing steps okay takes a couple of seconds Okay, so see it's done and we actually found actually find uh, 11 clusters. So again, uh, you can change all those parameters, for example, resolution, if you increase the resolution, you have more number of uh, clusters. If you uh, decrease, you have a few number of clusters. Really uh, finding the number of clusters is, is, uh, is an art, okay? There's no right or wrong definition, although Recently, there are papers showing how you can test the significance of uh, an existing uh, cluster. Okay? Uh, but really, it depends on how you define a, a cluster, right? How you define how similar the cells are from each other. So, I, so ideally, like each cell is very is unique to itself. I mean, each cell is a, by itself is a single cluster. But if you kind of relax the similarity within the same cluster a little bit so then you have like more cells um, that are forming uh, the same cluster okay now we can just do a visualization uh, using a look at the umap and using the steam plot function from the sc customer so i really like this uh, sc customize uh, uh, library so it provides a more actually flexible visualization uh, in addition to the original thread, art, uh, thread package so let's do that and you see uh, those this is a yield map uh, of all the clusters okay 11 clusters here okay okay uh, that's it for today i hope you uh, enjoy it and uh, make sure you subscribe uh, to this uh, youtube channel and i will have the r markdown file in the description of this video and you can download and follow the tutorial uh, happy learning uh, see you next time